Look at them yo-yos. That's the way you do it. You play the guitar on the MTV. That ain't broken. That's the way you do it. Money for nothing and the chicks for free. Now that ain't broken. That's the way you do it. Let me tell you, them guys and dogs. Maybe get a blister on your little finger. Maybe get a blister on your palm. They gotta install microwave on it. Custom kitchen delivery. They gotta move these refrigerators. They gotta move these color Boy, this is fun. Money for Nothing Reef is another example of this kind of duality, like in the Walk of Life Reef. Then, on the one hand, you have this complex finger picking going, but on the other hand, not only this reef is work as an, as an intro, it also is a part of the verse, the chorus and the outro as well. It goes through the whole song, all the way from beginning to end which means it's meant to be played while singing. Playing and singing at the same time is a pretty demanding task, especially when you have to play it not for a crowd of the thousand, but sometimes a crowd of the billion. I'm talking about Life 8. More on singing later. So, on Let's What You're Playing has a strict and simple pattern. It's too easy to mess it up. And Money for Knife and Reef has a simple pattern which Mark describes in his A Life in Songs documentary. Let's watch. And that's really essentially what I'm doing. I'm blocking out quite a lot of notes. So what he's saying is that the basic pattern of the song is his signature Thumb, upstroke, downstroke, and upstroke move on two strings. It's just four steps. Looks easy, right? One, two, three, four. The interesting part is when he talks about blocking strings. The riff is a call and response melody in eight bars as in YMN and what it is, both of which is also an 8 pass call and response riffs. You should be able to sing and play it as a single note line at any given time. And it starts on an off beat, which can be tricky right away. One. It starts with blocked strings, strings four and three. Remember this pattern? It starts with the two last moves. One, two, three, four. One. One, two, three, four. with the thumb hitting the first beat. One, two, three, four, one. It can be slide, muted strings, muted and open strings, open strings, or it can be just a rest. Now the riff itself. First two notes is a thumb index and middle on two strings and then a downstroke. This is crucial because so many people mess this part up but by playing like like this.
when an upstroke hammer on to the seventh fret with the thumb at the same time. To an upstroke. Then optional thumb and index fingers on the fourth string. Downstroke, upstroke, thumb. Slide to the third position, upstroke, mute. Now it's an upstroke and mute with the thumb on two strings. This thumb stroke is a very strong one, almost like a down stroke. The end of the call is more straightforward. It's open strings upstroke, then another upstroke, mute on the downstroke, to the muted upstroke. Still, still in the third position. Now in the first position it's a B power chord and the thumb. Mute to C power chord. To downstroke and upstroke. See the original pattern is all over the place. So Mark is definitely right about that. The response starts the same on an offbeat, only going down to this B flat here with an upstroke and thumb. Then upstroke again and a hammer on. To another upstroke. It's three upstrokes in a row. One, two, three. By the way, fingering in a typical Marx fashion is a very wide one using first and second fingers on 5th and 7th frets here, adding 4th finger up on 8th fret. Reminds me of a double bass where they play by ignoring the ring finger because Because of the hugeness of the neck. In Mark's case, it also the hugeness of the neck. But I like this fingering anyway. Also in the beginning riff it's these two fingers and a pretty compact shape. So we're going up in terms of the difficulty. The riff continues with a thumb. Upstroke, pull off, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, and thump. So it's five upstrokes in a row. I just realized that. One, two, three, four, five. The ending is like before, this power chord, this power chord also stays rhythmically the same, only the root changes to F and G. This is a lot of information, let's recap and play it as slow as human being can possibly play this riff.
before I tackle the rest of the song, I'd like to point out that all these harmonics mm, all these harmonics is purely an accidental stuff and you may like it or not, but it just happens. I don't think they were planned out and just happened in the studio at the moment or oh, in this part too. Who knows what they did. The verse is difficult to describe because here the original pattern is king. It's just a bunch of open strings, power chords, and mutes all thrown under the wheels of this pattern. The song goes. On the second part of the verse, here goes the riff on in all of its glory. And this is so difficult to play and sing at the same time. That's the way you do it. Then you know the riff inside out, don't try to sing it yet. But very slowly check all the keywords and corresponding beats. Look at them, yo yo. That's see that falls on this note. Look at them, yo yo. That's the way you do it. And tell you them guys and Maybe get a blister on your little finger. Maybe get a blister on 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 this note Make me get a blister on your lead. little falls on that note Make me get a blister on your little finger Make me get a blister on your thumb and so on The microwave oven spot is E flat power chord going to B flat power chord to, B, to E flat power chord again now the F1 and here is the second part of the riff also very hard to sing C, D, and E power chords. To add even more power, here's an old trick of Marx. Add a thumb over. Here's the main part of the song completely again, guitar only. Following wise, the song is very pleasing for Jamie Long because it's 99% G minor pentatonic and it's a very guitaristic key. Occasionally there's 
this distinct E from the C major chord. And it's pretty much the only thing that can change. But let me tell you, this is fun. From 33 songs I learned so far in terms of fun, this one takes the cake. So the next time you'll watch Mark playing Money for Nothing, just appreciate the amount of work he puts in each performance. The songs like that, you can just go and play with a 50-50 chance. It's hard work and it's only playing the song. Imagine writing something like that. This is working. And as the song's going on... That's just two strings. <laughs> 